Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to talk about another example where understanding the system and changing the system around is a way to solve problems. And this example of a hiring policy. So when should you hire, uh, hire somebody? And what kind of rules should you use? And how might that cause dysfunction if you're not, not careful? So let's start with a causal loop diagram showing the cause and effect uh, relationships. So we'll start up here with profits and down here with hiring. Okay, so the question is, how does hiring affect your profits? Well, we know adding people adds costs. Right? And costs decreases your profits. Okay, so hiring is bad in that respect, at least from a profit standpoint. But also, we usually hire for a reason, to do revenue-producing pro projects or to build products that will generate revenue or, you know, most, most of a company is on some revenue-producing uh, activity, either very directly like billable projects or indirectly like providing services or building products that are sold to customers. So uh, more hiring means more revenue-producing projects, let's just say, so an increase in revenue producing projects, which is an increase in revenue and an increase in profits. Okay? So hiring, and actually the trick on this one is there's a little bit of a delay, so which is marked uh, like this in these uh, diagrams. So when you hire, let's say you hire 10, 10 more people, they may build a product. It might take them a year and a half to build that new product, and then you generate revenue from it. The cost will hit you immediately for those 10 people but the revenue will have some kind of time delay on profits. Even billable revenue, you know, people have to come up to speed and know, you know, the domain or the customer base or be a mentor, a junior apprentice on a project before their uh, billable project. So there's usually a delay along this pipe between hiring and profits. But in the end, we hire for a reason. You need people to make money. So all this usually adds up to profits when you do hiring. There's just a different time time to mention on these two paths to profits. So how do companies usually decide whether they're going to hire? Well, they have a budget, and if all is going well, they hire up to the budget, right? So the way to, to diagram that out is you have a profit, uh, profit, budget, okay? So, and you compare your profits, your actual profits to your budget, and you have, um, I'm just going to call it a variance to budget. And that will dictate your hiring. So if you're, um, if you're let's say you make it $10 million, your budget was to make $10 million, uh, so you're on plan, you're probably going to hire you know, according to your plan. Um, if you're making $11 million and your budget was only $10 million, you're above by a million bucks, you're probably going to do some hiring. And if your profit is below your budget and you've got a negative variance, you're probably going to stop hiring. So that's, that's the way many, many companies operate. So, um, so this is a very popular system. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, let's, let's talk through how the system actually uh, performs and what kind of dysfunction um, that, it, uh, that it has. So causal loop diagrams are one system dynamics tool. And the next tool that I'm going to show you is what's called a behavior over time graph. And it's uh, uh, just a... Fancy name for, not even a fancy name, it's a name for a graph where time is on the x-axis and then a variety of variables are on the y-axis. Okay, so in this graph, um, uh, let's say you're, um, you're profitable, so your profits are growing. Your profits are ahead of your budget. Okay, so I'm going to draw the budget here underneath the profits. And because you're ahead of your budget, you're hiring. Okay, your headcount's going up. Now, what is going to happen right here? Right here, your budget, um, you're expected to grow faster than you're actually growing. So your budget eventually catches up to your profits. And then you start, your budget starts to exceed your profit, so you start having a negative variance. 
So what's going to happen in this system, the negative variance is going to cause you to stop firing. Okay? Um, so your head count is going to flatten out. And what will that do um, to these things? Number one, it probably, um, it'll immediately help your costs. Um, and then it probably is not going to impact your revenue for a while because there was a delay in this link anyway. So uh, if you didn't hire those 10 people, the revenue that you won't get because of the product that they don't build is probably going to be further a few years down the road anyway. So in the short term, your profits actually are enhanced a little bit by you not hiring. But in the long run, um, considering heads are um, by and large positive in the long run, then, um, then you're going to be missing the profits that these heads would have, would have contained. And in fact, your profits may level out uh, or they may even go, go down. Okay? So, I'll, um, so your profits will go up for a little longer. And under this scenario, they're going to level out. Okay, I think that's a reasonable scenario, or even worse, because you're not investing in the business, you're not building products, you're not doing projects that could generate revenue, and the good trend that you were on from a profit point of view flattens out. Okay, so I call this scenario, uh, scenario A. Okay, um, so this ends up being kind of dysfunctional, as you can tell. Because you were missing your budget, you stopped hiring, which you thought was a good thing to solve your profit problem. You had a profit problem, so you stopped hiring, and you considered that a positive action. But what it ended up happening is you ended up creating a bit of a vicious cycle, because not hiring, less revenue-producing products and projects, so less profits, which makes it even harder to meet your budget, which makes you want to want to want to hire even less. So you create a basically a vicious cycle here that you started by trying to solve a profit problem, you ended up creating a worse profit problem. So the way to change the system is actually a subtle change, but you ignore the budget. Or here's one solution. You ignore the budget, and you just base your hiring on your profits instead. Okay? So I'm not saying just hire like crazy no matter what, but if you're making money and you're growing, then hiring based on that, just your profits, not how you're doing relative to the budget, actually performs better as a system. And so let's, let's go to this diagram and, and understand that point. So if you, um, you're, you're growing, you're making money, and this trend would continue under this scenario. And because that trend continues, you would keep hiring under that scenario. So we'll call this scenario B. Okay, so in this scenario, the budget, which I've, I haven't uh, drawn, but you may be missing your budget, let's say, it might be like that, but, um, but you hire anyway, you continue to make money anyway, and you grow anyway. And actually, if your goal as a company is to make money and grow your profits, it's actually better to ignore the budget and to just let the profits be your guide. So scenario B outperforms scenario A from a profit point of view in the, in the, in the long run. And it might, scenario A might be a little bit better in these few months where, or uh, a quarter or so where you save money uh, by not hiring, but you, you don't have the revenue impact yet. But in the long run, if your goal is growing profits in the long run um, and, and, and having the most profits in the long run, then scenario B where you actually rewire the system to base your hiring on profits actually performs better. Okay? So, so that's just another example of changing uh, the system. So the takeaways here are, one is be conscious of the cause and effect relationships, which are basically the decision rules, like, like when do you hire. Two is understand the complex relationships between that you might ca cause and effect relationships that you might kick off by the kinds of uh, ways you make decisions. And three, recognize dysfunctions when they happen in your decision making and change the system uh, to, be, to, to perform better. So I hope that was helpful and informative, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.